Welcome to the Back to the Retro Review. We are going to review movies from the 80s and 90s. Basically, all the movies that everybody loves. This is episode number one, and we are starting off with Coming to America. I, a great movie. It, yep, it is an awesome movie. I am Kevin the Bearded Geek, and we have Mikey the Freak right there, co-hosting. Coming to America, it is uh, Prince Akeem is the prince of a wealthy African country, Zamunda, and, and wants for nothing except a wife who will love him in spite of all, in spite of his title. To escape an arranged marriage, Akeem fi- flees to America accompanied by his <laughs> sidekick, Simi, played by, by Arsenio Hall, to find his queen. Disguised as a foreign student working in fast food, he romances Lisa, but struggles with revealing his true identity to her, her and his marital intentions to his fa- king father. Holy crap, I couldn't get that through. I stumbled all the way through that it. That is a lot. That's a yeah. lot to say. I, <laughs> sorry, everybody. I stumbled all through that. I'm not a good reader. I can talk, but I'm not a good reader, apparently. The big words. Was a hard. <laughs> no, it's it basically it's Eddie Murphy playing playing Akeem. He he has an arranged marriage, so he wants to find somebody who truly loves him. So he fl- goes into New York, Queens, to find his bride. Because he's gonna be a king. So what's the better fitting place than Queens? Queens. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Such a cliche. <laughs> it, hey man, it's the eighties. Full of cliches. Uh, so when he gets to Queens, he's trying to find somebody. He goes into a, some bars and finds nobody. A bunch of a devil worshiper, some twins that uh, rap. <laughs> they even find Arsenio Hall played as a as a girl who wants to tear, tear him you apart. apart. And, friend and his friend too. too. Uh, <laughs> this is great. I mean, this movie has so many quotable lines. It's ridiculous. And Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall played so many different roles. I mean, Eddie Murphy was, you know, Akeem. He was, uh, let's see, he was the main barber. <laughs> he was, yep. let's see, he was, he was the old white guy in the barber mm-hmm. shop. Oh, uh, let's see. Randy Watson. Don't oh, yes. Can't forget about Randy Watson. Can't forget about Randy Watson because that boy's that good. good. That boy's <laughs> good. He can sing. He must be crazy. He must be crazy. <laughs> oh, such a good movie. Anyway, he's looking for his bride, so they hit all the bars, and then he goes to the barber shop, and he's like, where can you find a... a, a a nice lady. He's like, oh, you can go to church. You can, oh, you can go to this place where I'm going to tonight, which is where Randy Watson was, by the way. Black Awareness <laughs> Rally. Yep. And, uh, you know, Lisa's dad and sister are working there because he owns McDowell's, not to be confused with McDonald's. They got the Big Mick, not the yeah. Big Mac. That's right. So they're serving food out to the Black Awareness Rally people, and... Lisa gets on stage, and it's almost like love at first sight with uh, Eddie Murphy's character, Akeem. He he immediately falls for her, finds out where she works, and goes and applies and becomes the janitor, basically, at McDowell's. Gotta sweep, uh, his, sweep his way into her heart. Or, or mop, mop it. Way or heart. mop it, yeah. It was on their more first, mop. Uh, first meeting. <laughs> yes. Remember, when you think of trash, you think of Akeem. Exactly. <laughs> Very well. I got to go. Uh, it just and so basically, yeah. Af- after that, uh, he 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 basically works his way into her uh, life. She's already dating this douche of a guy, Daryl, played by uh, oh crap, what was his name? Eric Eric Lasalle. Yeah, Eric Lasalle. He's a douche of a guy, rich guy who's. Living off his family's invention. What is it? Sold. Sold low. Mm. <laughs> just let, just let your soul low. Oh, baby. It ain't all so sick and smooth. 
Just let it shine through me. <laughs> sing it. Sing it. I know, right? Oh, uh, but, it, I mean, he basically works his way into her life. They become friends. Uh, Daryl does a really douche move and engages them to be married without even asking her. Uh, he announces their engagement without even asking her to be his wife. And that's, uh, that's kind of where they make the connection, too, because, you know, Prince Akeem doesn't want to have those arranged, mar arranged marriages back in Zamunda, so they end up having that connection because she feels the same exact way. She doesn't want anybody running her life other than herself. She wants to make those decisions. Correct. So perfect perfect uh, interaction between uh, her and Akeem on the swing uh, outside, so... Right. That's where they kind of hit it off real well. And it, it, and then they go on like a day. And do, I love the connection to mm -hmm. uh, trading places. Yes. yes. When uh, he give, Duke. yeah, when he gives the money to Randolph and Mortimer. We're as back, a, Randolph. We're back. Oh, yeah, such that was, a, that was a good. Uh, that was that was a good. Uh, yeah, almost like a paying homage. Yeah. To uh, one of his older movies that really kind of put him on the map for Which, uh, for comedy, coming Dan yeah. Aykroyd. And you never know; it could make this show here in a, in a future future show because it is it fits the criteria, and I love yes. that movie too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But from there, from from sitting on the swings uh, at a at their engagement party, they go on the date. Um, and then by this time, Simi, Simi had came along with Akeem to America and Simi has blown through all of the, all of their money. Akeem's taken it away from him because he's trying to be a poor man and Simi still wants to live that rich life. So, <laughs> yeah, and he wants 300,000 American dollars. Do you and think that is, do you think that's Kagan, enough? Ellen Kagan is, is was great. <laughs> oh, you think that's enough? You sure? Let's make it You're, a cool million. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Do you, you do not think that's just too much? Nah. nah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he he wires as for as for a what? No, it's a telegram, right? It was a telegram, uh, correct? Yeah, like Western Union. Yeah. So yeah. he tried to telegram that to him, and so Akeem's father ends up. The Coming prize. to America, yeah, played he by James up. Earl Jones. Played by James Earl Jones, which causes a whole big mess. He ends up telling Lisa that Hakeem actually only came to America to sow his wild oats. So yeah. she goes off and Hakeem finds her again. And this is a real abbreviated version of the story. They, they're on the subway, and she, he's like, I will renounce my throne mm -hmm. if that makes you happy because he is in love with her. She's yeah, like, he I can't care. let you – yeah, I can't let you do that. So she ends up going away. Akeem goes back to Zamunda to be wed. Uh, but on the way back, the prince – the, the no, I'm sorry, the queen is talking mm -hmm. to the king saying – you know, I can't believe that you told her that. He says, and he's like, but it is tradition. He says, who am I to change tradition? And she's like, I thought you were the, the king, king, dude. Yeah, you're the king, man. You can do whatever the hell you want. He's like, ah, ha. Yep. Let's so do this. the end scene is basic, is the wedding. Prince Hakim's standing there. He's down in the dumps. He's thinking he's going to marry Don't his girl. Girl. <laughs> yeah. Arf, 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 arf. Arf. Yeah, a big dog. Oh, oh woof, woof. woof. <laughs> but she, he's thinking he's gonna marry her, and he goes to lift the veil in surprise. Happy, happy ending. It's Lisa. Just what he wanted. Just what he wanted. That is a quick synopsis. A real abbreviated and. Uh, I'm, if you're watching this review, you've seen this freaking movie. You know what the hell oh, we're absolutely. talking about. There are tons of people that have seen this movie. It's one of those cult classics that you can, anytime that it's on TV, no matter 
if it's on your HBOs or mm-hmm. Cinemax or you know or the the bleaked out version, which is pretty uncut and and boring. <laughs> It, but, yeah, it can uh, be boring. It, you it you gotta you boring. gotta have the eighties version with the boobies. <laughs> gotta have the boobies. Yes. yes. <laughs> you gotta have the bathing scene. Yes. They cut that out every single time. Yeah. Uh no matter what what our station. AMC <laughs> Comedy Central. TBS, Comedy Central it, was it the don't worst. Matter. Yeah. Uh yeah. So the you know the the censorship is what kind of makes this movie and mm-hmm. it it's a typical, you know, eighties, um, you know, you, you, anytime that it comes on, you can sit there and you can watch it even no matter what part it's in. I mean, mm-hmm. it starts at the beginning, the traditional scene where it's, it's zooming over, um, Africa going up to the giant castle or the palace. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's kind of paying homage to what uh, Zamunda should look like. Uh, which is, you know, your stereotypical African type movies, uh, giant palace in the middle of, of the Nowhere, rainforest, yeah. almost. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, no matter what part of this movie, the watchability of this movie is just—it's impeccable. You can do it any, no matter where it's at. You can even start have it at the at the end of the movie, and you'll watch the last fifteen minutes, even though you've seen it fifty thousand times. I you've would describe there and watch the movie. Yeah, I would describe this movie as a Sunday afternoon relaxing lazy day movie. That's the that's the perfect way to describe it. Flipping through the channels. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna sit and relax. Or yeah. clean the house or whatever whatever you're doing. It's something you could put on and you know the dialogue, you know what's going on. It's one of those movies that it's just you put it on and you can enjoy it no matter what you're doing. Yeah, you know, for for being 30, 30 years old, it comes down to can you still sit there and watch this movie being that, you know, being that old? And absolutely. Absolutely. You can watch that, you can watch that movie. It was uh, what came out in the mid-1988. I'm not sure exactly what month. Uh, it, but I know 1988. So you figure 33 years ago, 33 years, and they can still come out um, and entertain. The film, it was released in, on June 29th, 1988. Summer movie. Absolutely. Yep. I can understand that. There you go. Oh, I yep. mean, this movie, like, like, like Mikey said, you can just be flipping through the channels or it's not something that... I would necessarily seek out on, say, streaming or something like that. But, like, if I'm flipping through, if I'm scrolling through and I see it, yeah, you know what? I'll yeah. watch Coming to America, you know? It's you know, one it, of those. It's, some, it's something, too. Uh, you hit a point. Even if, like, Netflix or um, now it's on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. you can, if, if there's nothing to watch and you're like, you know what? I want to old, watch an old movie from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, why not? Why not sit there and watch it? Almost Good. two hours, two, almost basically two hours of your day, and you can sit there and relax, have a cold beer by your by your side, throw some mm-hmm. popcorn or some chips. Yeah, I can stay per- entertained. Perfect Sunday movie. Yeah, Perfect absolutely. Sunday afternoon the nail movie. Nail on that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What, what hey. what's the other what's What's the other uh... sequels? Sequels, so, yes. So this is one of those movies where just recently they released a movie coming to America. Mm-hmm. Should have changed the title, but it makes sense. Coming to America, coming With the to number two, two America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one of those movies to where I really think you should have left it alone. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. If you, if you guys haven't watched this, haven't watched Coming to America yet, the second one, um, it it's a good watch to just say you've watched it because of being such a cult classic and a cult icon of a movie from the eighties. Um, watch it once. Some people are entertained. Um, I, you know, as for me and uh, me and the bearded geek over there, <laughs> we can quote this entire movie. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, it, it's just, 
you know, like I said, watch it once so you can say you watch it. Uh, I would say you're probably going to be a 50-50 on whether or not you're really going to enjoy it or not. Yeah, in my opinion, the sequel just tried to be too much of a parody of itself. Um, yeah. I would, it, if you was to watch these movies back to back, the original, the cinematography on it, the way it was shot, uh, I this movie still kind of holds up today. I, in my mm-hmm. opinion, coming the original coming to America, uh, it blows the the sequel that just got released out of the water. Just it, they should have never. They should have probably never even made it, but since they did, like yeah. like Mikey said, you know, watch it once and never come back to it again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm still trying to come up with whether or not I want to watch it again, and I'm like, yeah. I just can't. You yeah. know, you, you just can't build up the courage. Like, you don't want to waste an hour and a half on on Amazon Trash. Prime and try to sit try to sit there <laughs> and watch it. I really can't. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it was trash. I mean, I I will say I enjoyed it. I, I I'm calling I'm calling coming to America trash, but it I enjoyed it for what it was. I'll never go back to it again though. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with that. I have to end that one right there. It's yeah, it's it's not something that uh, it, it's will it hold water? No. Ten years from now. I'd still rather watch the first one than the second one. Agreed. Agreed. You know, and and they always say, you know, they movie companies should never make sequels because the sequels are usually worse than the first one because they really try to outdo. Mm-hmm. They out try to outdo the first one. They try to let's see what are we going to do to make it better. What are we going to do to make it more entertaining? And a lot of times, sequels are only two to three years later because they keep the fans involved mm-hmm. and they're keeping them to where it's fresh in their mind. After three years, you're still watching the first movie. I can see a second one coming out <clears throat> like several eighties movies mm-hmm. that came out back then. Um, but the, the perfect you know example is you don't make a movie 30 years later and expect it, cannot expect it to be as huge as a hit <clears throat> as it was 30 years. Now I do like the fact that, they brought a whole new generation into it. So, yeah. you know, you have, you have kids, you know, I was eight when the movie came out and now I have a 10 year old and my 10 year old could sit there and watch the movie, the second one, and maybe understand what's going on, but he still has to watch the first one from 30 years ago. Yeah, right. You know, if they did something, the like edited reboot, version for him though. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Edited version of the first movie. But if they did a if they did a reboot where it was the first movie again, thirty mm. years later, no, some work. But this one, this one, I don't think they could have done it. So if it was a coming to America, but a, a, a reboot of the original from thirty years ago, I think it would have been worse than what yeah. it was now. I I think coming coming to America the original was perfect for it its time and it holds up because you know the time it came out in. If you was to make that today, I don't think it would be as good of a movie. No. If that yeah. Coming coming to America was perfect for the time period it was in. It it marked all the right boxes. It it, it was your perfect summer movie for that time. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just it just has to be one of those cult classic icon movies right. from All the eighties right. that, that they'll they'll keep repeating. <clears throat> um, classic line one liners in the movie, uh, perfect one that is always funny. Somebody, uh, you look so good. Somebody, I'll put you on a plate and sop you up with a biscuit. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good one. Those those kind those kind of uh, of sayings um, are only good in. in certain movies from the 80s and this is one where there's there's several where you make that statement um to somebody <clears throat> and they know exactly what you're talking about if they've seen that movie true right so let's give this a rating like okay if we was to put if we was to rate this from one to ten what would you rate this ten uh, being the best ten being the best yeah. one being the one being yeah, the worst absolutely so you figure, um, 
if you if you have to go by based on comedic value, um, not really like cinematography because there really wasn't much back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, it was there. I mean, it definitely was there. But um, so comedic value, uh, acting the acting with Arsenio and Eddie playing four different characters other than themselves um, was you know straight up. Um, you know, comedic icons back mm-hmm. then in the eighties. Um, I would have to go out of one out of ten, probably around the eight. I would say, uh, if it, it's definitely not in the lower, oh, lower definitely. even the mid range, just because it, you know there's several different reasons why you're always laughing. I've seen it a thousand times, literally probably a thousand times, <laughs> <clears throat> um, especially if you can quote the movie. And it's, I laugh every single time. You know, yeah. I know what's coming up. I can talk to them. I can quote them back and forth, but you know what's coming up. And you still laugh. That's that's why it's in the in the high ballpark for me. Yeah, I, I would have to rate this probably 8, eight point. I'll give it an 8.5. Yeah. Uh, simply because, like you said, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall, played so many different parts and it took me a a few watches. Well, of course I was a lot younger too, but it took me several watches to realize that Eddie Murphy was the old white guy in the barbershop. Yeah. Now, (laughs) just to kind of give, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt, but when you look at, um, when I was watching it last week, if you look at the scene to where he cuts (laughs) off his princess luck, right. And you know where I'm going. Yeah. The guy is completely different, and you can exactly. tell in the mirror. I, I think yeah. they should have left that part out. They shouldn't have left. They they shouldn't have had a stand-in or a, or a body double. They should have just uh, cut it from a different scene, turned it a different way to where maybe it was just the poster in the background, maybe the yeah. poster. But um, yeah, and you can tell it, it looks like the guy from um, uh, what is it? Um, my mind went blank. Oh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Boy meets world. Boy meets oh, world. Oh, the, oh yeah, the the principal. Yeah. Uh, principal, yes. It yeah. looks like him. But it's very not. Much, I mean. Very much. Very so. much. Yeah, it's not. Him. But I know what scene you're talking about. But yeah, yeah. I, I'd still give it yeah. eight point five because of all the scenes Absolutely. that Eddie Murphy and Arsenio played, they pl- played multiple scenes. I mean, in completely different characters every every time. Uh. The, the the acting was great. I, I I don't I can't name one scene to where I think, you know, that that scene was kind of eh. every scene that they put yeah. in there, I believe, was really good. It flowed very well. You could follow the story. Eight point five. Absolutely. Yeah. Good rating. I think I think we can solidify our, our and I, we can solidify our answers, but I don't think we're going to have many people disagree <clears throat> that are our generation that it, every scene had some kind of comedic value mm-hmm. to the movie, whether or not it was the first time we meet the Mighty Sharp uh, Barbers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're talking about boxing. Holy Jesus. Oh, oh, yeah. um, you know, Rocky like, Marciano. <laughs> Rocky Marciano. Every time I got to talk yeah. about boxing, Rocky Mar- <laughs> white man got to pull Rocky Marciano out of the ass. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so that kind of scene really set off and and pushed those characters to another level as well. And you know they're only they're only in about four scenes, I think, mm-hmm. in the entire movie. Um, but it's it's memorable scenes where you you can quote the whole scene pretty and much yeah. every time a sign. Pretty much. There they go. There they go. So yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's it's one of those where it's a um, I'd say not a comedic masterpiece uh, per se, but it's a um, it, it's definitely up there on the the eighties uh, entertaining skill. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely, that'll right. basically so, sustain for years. What I want to what I want to know is I want everybody who's watching this to put in their comments what was their favorite scene i want to know what you would rate the movie does your rating differ than ours um i i know that 
Yeah, and tell us why. Yeah, tell us why. Yeah, uh, hit that like and subscribe button while you're at it. You know, every little bit helps. <laughs> but I do believe that we're going to end this here, end the discussion here. Uh, so, so for Mikey the Freak, I'm the Bearded Geek saying, man, thank you for watching. Back, back to the retro. Ha, ha, ha.